Hey guys, what is going on? This is Cardinal Bird 5. Uh, today I have another video for you guys. We're going to be talking about something a little bit different. And um, I honestly should have did this video like a few months ago. I don't know why I've been holding off on it. I'm just going to keep it simple though. Uh, we're going to talk about when to power swing. And we're going to talk about how effective power swinging is this year. Um, and we're going to give you two demonstrations. I'm going to use first a player such as Orlando Cepeda. And then I'm going to use a player with, you know, lower contact and lower play vision. Uh, I think we're going to use Mike Schmidt for that example. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get into batting practice here. Uh, we're just going to face, it don't matter. We'll just face uh, DeGrom here. Um, I want to show you guys when to power swing and when not to power swing. Um, because it doesn't just depend on the player you're using. It also depends on the pitchers you're facing and the difficulty you are on. Now, if you're playing Battle Royale, I will just say this. I believe that's on Veteran. If it, I know it says it's on All-Star, but if it's on All-Star, they did something to the sliders where it's pretty much like Veteran difficulty. So, if you're playing on like Veteran right here and your PCI is that big, Reason Strikes on camera, by the way, guys. If your, stri if your uh, PCI is that big to where it is bigger than the width of the strike zone, that's kind of my key indicator that you should be power swinging. Um, not only is it, you know, bigger than the strike zone, it's, uh, you know, you know, it's substantially bigger than the, than the width of the strike zone. I mean, it's not just the size of it. So that's kind of what I use as, you know, a visual parameter of whether or not I should power swing or not. So when you're on veteran difficulty, PCIs are going to be huge. So I always recommend um, power swinging. Now when we go to All-Star... A lot of Diamond Dynasty games are on All-Star, unless you get to the Championship Series. Uh, you can see the PCI is a little bit smaller. But, it's still bigger than the width of the Strike Zone. That's kind of the key indicator for me. Um, and now we are facing Jacob DeGrom, who has decent per 9, so that also affects the size of the PCI. If you guys don't know, watch my videos, hits per 9, K per 9, I explain all of that. And uh, you know, also the plate vision and contact affect the size of the PCI as well. So, this right here... Uh, when the PCI is that big, that's kind of the borderline, I think, um, to power swing. So, you know, it's still a decent amount bigger than the strike zone. So, I still recommend power swinging. You see I power swung there and my PCI is still a decent size. So, I still recommend power swinging when it is, you know, that big. We're going to change this to back control, actually. Alright, so next we're going to go to Hall of Fame. Now, this is pretty much the same size of the strike zone, and this is where I stop power swinging. Um, when it's about the same size, you know, the width of the strike zone or smaller, I stop power swinging. I mean, you can if you're feeling really confident, but uh, I power swung there, and you can see it's a lot smaller. But this is about borderline, and this is usually when I stop, because the risk versus reward, it's really not worth it on Hall of Famer higher, um, because it's it's difficult enough to hit the pitches. They're not only coming in faster, but the timing and placement of your PCI is much less forgiving. So, right there was a normal swing and I hit it out. Um, also, keep in mind, guys, things like you know sliders down and away, or breaking balls down and away. That's also going to affect the size of the PCI. And when you're trying to power swing on those, <laughs> good luck. Um, so you know, Orlando Cepeda is a guy that has great contact and great power, but you can't just base it on the player alone. You have to base it on the difficulty which you're playing on and the pitcher you are facing. Uh, you know, so for, for this instance, we get the Hall of Fame. Um, personally, I would just use normal swing for this. And as you can see, I'm hitting hitting the ball pretty well. Uh, next, we're going to get into a... Uh, we're going to use another player. We're going to use Mike Schmidt. And I will uh, show you the key differences. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys. So we're back. Now we're using Mike Schmidt. Um, and before we get started on this, I just wanted to point out, I was using Orlando Cepeda for a purpose... Uh, on the last demonstration. He's actually has the biggest PCI among all first baseman because of his contact and play vision. Maybe outside of the uh, flashback Miggy, who's actually a third baseman anyway, but he plays first. So that's kind of why I used to pay to there. Um, and even on Hall of Fame difficulty, I still chose to use normal swing. Uh, now we're back on all-star difficulty. We're going to use back control and we're using Mike Schmidt. Uh, just to prove to you guys, this all-star difficulty right there. Um, now we're facing Jake DeGrom, same pitcher. Now look at the size of the PCI for Mike Schmidt already. Um, it's already pretty much the size, you know, the width of the strike zone. 
So I'm not going to power swing. That's the difference right there. Like I power swung with Cepeda on all-star difficulty, but with Mike Schmidt, I'm not going to. He has low contact and low play vision, and his PCI is pretty much the exact same size as with the strike zone. Uh, so in that case, I choose not to power swing there. I'll even go to veteran. Let's see what it looks like. All right, now this is about borderline. Um, you can still power swing here, but uh, you know, personally, when it's just a bit bigger than the width of the strike zone, I usually still don't power swing. Um, but this is veteran, and you can see the PCI is not humongous like a lot of times it can be in battle royale. That's just because Mike Schmidt doesn't have the power and play vision. So I would probably still use normal swing there. Now we'll even go to Hall of Fame. And look how much smaller it is compared to what Cepeda. Cepeda was about the with the strike zone. Almost what it looked like on All-Star for Mike Schmidt. So we're going to use normal swing for Mike Schmidt. We're veteran, All-Star, and Hall of Fame difficulty against a pitcher like Jacob Pagrom. Now, if we're facing a bum pitcher, like a bronze pitcher, which you'll hardly ever face. I mean, you might actually face that in Battle Royale to start a game. But in DD, you're really not going to face that. So um, that might be the instance you power swing with Mike Schmidt. But really, guys, it's not worth it to power swing. I mean, the risk versus reward, it's just not there. Uh, your PCI is a lot smaller. And there's almost a certain you know, threshold or breaking point to where once your PCI gets so small, you got to be so precise with it to have any decent uh, consistency. So that's pretty much my guideline of power swinging. Um, I still want to talk about power swinging in general for this year specifically. Uh, I believe it's a lot more effective. I don't like, have any... Um, exact numbers on how much more effective it is but last year I didn't power swing at all MLB 14 didn't power swing at all I feel like it was completely useless uh, now back on MLB 13 I power swung a lot I feel like it helped a ton um, so this year I feel like power swinging is back and it's still effective and it can be used uh, you know when used in the right situations it is a great tool to have um, so I like that it is actually usable this year and it does make a difference uh, and some in some instances the risk first reward is there you just have to know when to power swing and when not to power swing of course it's also dependent on your scenarios if you get a 3-1 count and you know your opponents throwing a lot of you know a lot of fastballs down the middle you might want to power swing in that instance um, just things like that you want to mix up so um, also a good a good way to see if power swinging is helping you is to check the exit velo off the bat um, I notice when I power swing a lot uh, the exit velo can go up, you know, when I actually hit the ball decent, it can go up to like 115, you know, 110, 115 miles an hour. So it does make a difference on the exit velo, which is really a good indicator of how hard you are hitting the ball. So to wrap up this video, power swinging, is it worth it? It really depends. Um, you have to choose wisely when to do it. Of course, my visual cue when to power swing is if the PCI is a little bit wider than the strike zone. When it gets to be about the same width as a strike zone or smaller, I stop power swinging. And all that is dependent on the hitter and pitcher you're facing as well as the difficulty. So that wraps up this video, guys. If you guys have any questions, um, of course, you can ask in the comments or follow me on Twitter at Cardinal5, and I will try to give you guys um, my personal opinion whether or not you should power swing on a player. So feel free to comment, and I will try to answer. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This is Cardinal5, signing out. Peace.